Here. Black. Curtis. Here. Northbrook. Young. Here. Brown. Here. Lynch. Here. Henry. Here. Adams. Here. At this time, we'll have an application by Commissioner Five. Your Heavenly Father, and I thank thee for allowing us to be here, to assemble here in these chambers this morning. I thank thee for all of the blessings we received since we last came before you. Special blessings on those who are in need this morning, special blessings for those who are stressed, special guidance for those who have been given the responsibility of leading this county. I also ask special prayers for our colleague who is experienced um, the deepest of um, dread and, and, and with the death of his wife this morning. We need him to be covered by your prayers. Our city, our county experienced some hardships this weekend. Young people's lives were taken. I ask special blessings for their families. Keep us all in your prayers, O oh Lord. I ask these blessings by son's name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, first, I want to pass on from another volunteer. She lives in Ann Arbor area, 
And again, it's about the spay and neuter. No animals have been being spayed and neuters. There are females in heat being kept in with the male dogs, which you might imagine might cause quite a problem and quite a stir. Um, she had a male dog out that actually hurt her on Friday um, because of this. This falls under Rule 25, number 7 in the penal code. Um, that a female that cannot be housed and he in with the males. Um, the other concern um, was the use of bleach. Um, I was told with Nolan that no longer using bleach, they are still using bleach. The, the major concern in this is even in diluted bleach, if it's diluted correctly, it causes a hazardous chlorine gas, which used improperly can even cause death between the dogs in World War I. It causes irritation. You can clearly see this on many of the animals. Not only that, but your workers are in hazard. Even a HEPA mask does not do that. So I know he's mentioned using something totally different, which I think is probably the best, because if you can't get the correct dilution of that, then you probably need to go to something else. Um, so those are those are main concerns in the spaying, neutering. Um, cleaning the cages, power washing. I know I've seen that myself with the dogs in the, ca in the cage. Please wrap up. So that is a major concern as well because that falls under um, the penal code on um, Rule 32 as well. Thank you. Thank you. Public address to the board. I'm representing Citizens Against Government Overreach, which of course I told you before. Um, today I've come before you uh, over an issue that's really not on the agenda today, but I know that it's in process. And uh, I've got some documents that I wanted to uh, pass out to each of the commissioners, and I've uh, given uh, Mr. Carowin for the record. to the proposal to privatize procurement. And um, what, I, what I've given you is a, um, a set of facts that I put together when I first became concerned about this process and uh, what was happening that I saw had the potential for um, fraud and perhaps even not meeting the needs of the public. There are two questions that I will read to you and then I will sit down. The uh, top of page two, question one, is it ethical for an elected official to collude with a privately owned business or a tax exempt business organization to enrich the private interest through public money? Question number two, is it ethical for a business that does a county purchasing system evaluation to then be invited to bid on a contract to take over the government purchasing system. I have traced the ownership of the organization that did the study, and that is contained in this, in this document, and also the assumed names that these organizations have. So um, before you go forward, I would like for you to read the bottom of page five and the top of page six of your RFQ that was, um, that was released, I believe it was last December, last November. The RFQ states that there's a uh, protection for conflict of interest in awarding this contract. So I would like you to read that, see how that applies, and um, as you go forward, please protect the public from the potential for fraud, not just in the current purchasing system, but in one that you're proposing to, um, to go out in the public and award a contract to a private company. Thank you. Thank you. Public address to the board. Hi, my name is Doreen Scanlon. I live in Mount Morris Township, Commissioner Henry's District. My question for you this morning is why are we once again taking cats to the garage? Um, a stray black cat came in on Tuesday, March 3rd and was placed in cage 73. On Monday, March 9th, the cat appeared to be developing a URI, upper, upper respiratory infection. Dr. Cohen was asked by AC staff to um, take a look at the cat. Rather than taking the cat to her enclosed surgical room 
or the isolation ward, she chose to take this cat to the cold garage to examine it. While the cat was in the garage, it got away from her. So we have a loose cat in the garage. Um, volunteers offered to bring in a live trap. And we were told by the director that as of Tuesday, the cat was still loose and that they did not have a working <coughs> trap. Um, they knew the week before that their trap was not working because we had a cat loose in the cat ward that had escaped over the weekend. At any rate, traps can be purchased at Tractor Supply, probably not even five miles from the shelter. So I personally took a live trap in last Thursday. I was told by an ACO that the trap was no longer needed, that they had found one, and she had been setting it for the last few days, and despite that, she was unable to catch the cat. I'm concerned that she's still using the same broken trap. Please wrap up. Um, the point on this is both of these, there's another cat too that came in like a week later, again taken to the garage. These cats were on stray hold. How are their owners expected to find them? And again, my question, we have a history of animals going to the garage, especially cats, never returning. Um, it's just a bad place when you, the, the garage. So, I thought we were moving towards transparency. It seems like we're once again hiding animals. Thank you. Public address to the board. Public address to the board. Final call. Public address to the board. Communication, presentation, Bishop International Airport, Craig Williams, Airport Director. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I just uh, want to thank the uh, board for the uh, opportunity to come down and really introduce myself to the board, but also just share a little bit about Bishop Airport. I've been in the position since uh, officially I came, started August 22nd of last year, replacing uh, Jim Rice, who uh, went off to retirement. So I've been in there about seven months, and I'm learning a lot about the community and also the, uh, the people, and uh, really finding out what a jewel we have in Bishop Airport out there. Uh, just as a matter of background, I came from Fort Wayne, Indiana. I was the director of operations down there and assumed the position uh, up here as the airport director. So what I'm going to give to you is just kind of my presentation that I'm, I'm reaching out to people in the community. I'm sharing information about the airport, and I'm trying to get feedback also, what people think about it. What are the strengths of the airport? What are the weaknesses? What are the opportunities? Because I really do think we have a jewel there, and I, I, I'm proud of, of what we have, and I really just want to talk about it. I love talking about airports. You're welcome to ask any questions as I go through the presentation. I, I'm happy to entertain any questions that you have, and I'll do my best. If I can't answer them uh, right here, I can certainly uh, get, get you an answer afterwards. So with, uh, with that, I'm going to start, start the presentation. All right, one thing I'd like to talk about is the ease of access to Bishop International Airport. That was the one thing that's amazing to me as I've come here is the geography of the area. And I've, I've learned it myself. I've learned the access that we have uh, to really a large number. I mean, you can be to Lansing in less than an hour, Saginaw in an hour, Port Huron, and almost down to Detroit. So we have been within an hour's distance a pretty good sized population and it's easy to get here. So that's really uh, something that I, I think that is part of the story to be told. And as I've been out talking to airlines as well, it's educate them about the region. When I told them that the Detroit Pistons actually play closer to Flint, Air, Flint and Bishop Airport than Detroit, it just, it, it wows their mind, just like it did when I first came to the area as well. So really, it's really just about education, educating uh, people the location and how easy it is to get here. And this, uh, it might be a little difficult for you to read, but it's, it's a, a telling story here. We are the third largest airport in Michigan. And a lot of people don't really understand that about the airport, but you know, back in 1987 when the airport authority was created, there was about 222,000 passengers. Last year we were just over 835,000 passengers, 
And if all goes well, we should be over uh, uh, probably about a 2 to 3% gain uh, with, with uh, 2015's numbers. 2014 was up 5.75% from 2013. And that was despite the fact that we had 10% less seats in the market. So we were up almost 6%, but we had 10% less seats. Yeah, there you can see it a little bit clearer. So what I like to tell everyone is we are a true regional airport. We serve certainly Flint and Genesee County, but we serve a wide region. About 2.6 million passengers is what we call as our, our catchment area. And we serve. I don't see any reflection of Canada out there. I recently flew up front and there was a lot of Canadians utilizing here. Yes, in fact, we have a quite quite a few people. And as I walk the terminal and talk to people and, and thank them for using the airport, uh, I've come upon people as far away as London. London is the farthest that I've had using the airport. And it is nice. This map reflects uh, Michigan, the, the primary the primary part. But it's certainly, and I know we've had people actually from uh, the northeast corner of Indiana also come up and use the airport as well. Uh, but, if, you know, we do expand, you know, when you have a, a reach like that. But our primary catchment area is the purple area there. And uh, that's, a, you know, Genesee County and Flint and also the, uh, I'll say, the uh, inner reaches of the uh, surrounding counties as well. But the green is where our biggest opportunity is. That's where the, the largest number of pop population is. And the people in the green have a choice. And we want to make sure that Bishop is their choice for, for when they're flying. So we're really out there uh, hitting in those areas as well, talking to businesses. Our marketing team is out there talking to businesses really all throughout the region. <coughs> One thing I'd like to uh, convey, and I want you guys to know it as well, is that we're more than just passenger air service. An airport uh, is a hub to a lot of uh, a lot of activity, and we go out there, and you know, we've got cargo. We've got uh, two flights a night from FedEx, one from Memphis and one from Indianapolis that brings cargo to the region. So we have a lot of activity out there. General aviation, it plays a big part of what we do. And also we have an intermodal facility as well. So it's not just about, excuse me, passengers. It's about the total package when it comes to the airport. And I, I shared this story about uh, Fort Wayne when I was confronted once down there where somebody said, yeah, but I never fly out of the airport. What do I get out of it? And I said, well, any time you get an overnight package or a package from uh, FedEx or UPS, you are getting uh, something from the airport. The airport does serve the community, not just people uh, flying on uh, planes to Florida. But what I really like to convey is that we are a campus that supports small businesses. And when, you, when I say small businesses, it's almost laughable because Delta and Southwest and United, those aren't really small businesses. Those are very large. Uh, or companies, but when in Flint, at our airport, those are companies that are 30, 50 people, so they're really small businesses, and sometimes I, I joke with people that I'm, I'm a mayor of an airport, and my job is to facilitate the, the safe operation of the airport and facilitate small business. So those are just some of the businesses that we have, but we also have, we're home to nearly two dozen different companies out there, and that's really what this is all about. It's about economic generation and it's about jobs in the community. So those two, two dozen companies, there's about 575 jobs out there at the airport. So if we were one company, if the airport was just under one umbrella, we would be one of the larger employers in the area. But we're home to two dozen different uh, companies. Now of those 575 employees, the airport authority covers about 52 of those. So we're, we're a small part of what makes that, that whole air, uh, airport tick. And I really think it's an important consideration when we talk about what contribution we bring to the community. One of the things that I hear about is we need this airline, we need this air, that airline. What I really like to tell everybody is we are served by four airlines that cover 90% of the capacity in the United States. Now, it used to be that there were a lot of airlines, and I could have even gotten a different chart that takes us back to 1990 when there were 16 airlines on here. But since 2008, you've had Delta and Northwest merge, you've had United and Continental merge, 
Southwestern Air Tran, and American and U.S. Air. So a lot of those airlines, it's not that those airlines have left Flint. They've just left the industry. They've been uh, gobbled up by uh, partners, and, uh, and now we're down to four. So there's a number of airlines that cover the rest of the 10%. Yes? Um, with regard to that, um, one concern I have, I, I really love the airport. It's, it's a wonderful airport, and it's a jewel of the community. However, sometimes it's very hard to get a nonstop to anywhere from the airport, which means you have to connect to either Detroit or, or Chicago. Um, do you foresee some improvement in that area? Um, the answer is we're, we're always trying to get more or, uh, flights to different hubs. What's really happened in the industry is the number of hubs have decreased. So if you want connectivity, say, to Florida, or you know we've got Vegas and we've got a number of cities, but it, you know, the, when, when these airlines have merged, I'll give you the example. When Delta and Northwest merged, Cincinnati as a hub went away, Memphis as a hub went away. So those are no longer there. United and Continental uh, went away, Cleveland went away. So that, that went away. Southwest and AirTran, they were kind of point to point, but uh, Atlanta as a hub went away for AirTran. American and US Air is still too early in the mix to find out what's going to happen with their hubs, but certainly there will be hubs that will, will be lost as they merge as well. So we continue to try to find uh, new routes and, and try to entice our existing carriers to serve more locations as well for the, those hubs. But the airlines are a hub and spoke system. So you don't foresee non-stops in the future? I, I, the answer is I don't get to make the choice on that, but we certainly, we're out there selling them all the time. Um, I do think the market has the opportunity to go to other hubs. We've talked to each one of those airlines in the last three months and really say, okay, you serve us through one hub, and I'll give you an example. United and American both fly you know, from Chicago. It's my opinion that the market is strong enough here to support uh, a nonstop to Newark on United or a nonstop to Dallas on, on uh, American. Now it's a matter of the airlines uh, believing what I'm selling them. And that's, uh, that's uh, something we work with our air service consultants, our air service and marketing team back at the airport and myself. And we go down there and visit them uh, on a, try to, try to be down there at least twice a year. Thank you. And just as a point of comparison, 90% in the United States, uh, to get the same level of 90% uh, of capacity in Europe, 39 different airlines cover that. So there's a lot more, uh, a lot more airlines, uh, a little more of an oligop oligopoly here in the United States. Uh, talking about locations, we do have the non-stops of Baltimore, Las Vegas, Orlando, Tampa, Fort Myers, Atlanta, Minneapolis, and Chicago. As I mentioned uh, before, I really do think uh, we have the capability to, uh, to do more. And that's where we as, a, as an airport work with the economic development folks of the region to, to help sell their story and then also for them to tell our story as well. It's a, it's a synergistic relationship. We like to talk about the connections we have. Certainly you have hubs on with American and United and Delta. But uh, Baltimore, Washington, which is a very important route for us, and this is why I really try to talk it up. But we have, you know, Baltimore through Southwest has some great connections, and they also have a lot of international connectivity there as well. So when you're looking, don't hesitate to look to uh, Southwest as well for some options. And then also with Chicago, you know, we have six flights to that to that airport as well. And I think that's really good about connecting because Chicago certainly it plays an integral part uh, in the business community here and Oakland County and uh, even as we get into some of the surrounding areas. Craig, could you go back to that number slide one side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from Baltimore you can go to Charleston, South Carolina? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And with the connections that we have, we have uh, a morning connection that leaves, leaves here about 6 a.m gets there 7.30ish, and then you can get uh, you know, the connection. I don't know all what time the flights are to Charleston, but those were the best ones that, you know, we wouldn't put that up there if you had to wait six hours in Baltimore. So, and Baltimore is very convenient to get to Washington, D.C. if you haven't done that yet. Uh, it's a, just a nice short train, train ride down there. 
Uh, this is one thing that I uh, I just love about this airport. It is a beautiful facility, and uh, certainly I, I'm assuming that you've all been out there. And if you haven't, I invite you to come out. I'll I'll give you a nice tour of it. But it's a beautiful facility. This the airport was uh, constructed in '95, and it does not. It, it really hasn't aged a bit. It's it's like Dick Clark. It just keeps looking uh, great for for its age. And and one thing about it, and I. It, from an architectural standpoint, it makes it easy to expand. Uh, it's kind of like Dulles uh, Airport, where it can grow right on the edges. It really doesn't look dated, and it's very nice and, and well lit. Uh, people who come from other areas that you know who, who see it for the first time just really say this is a great looking facility. I'm proud of it. I love walking through it. I love talking to passengers, finding out that people are coming from London, Ontario, uh, because it's more convenient than going down to Detroit or Toronto for them. Uh, we have a nice area for people to relax before their flights, and and really the nice, especially in the winter time, it's nice and sunny as you're sitting there waiting for your flight, and so you, it's got a lot of ambient light, which I really like. Uh, makes the light bills a little bit less. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Interestingly, uh, my husband flew from Dallas mm -hmm. last yesterday evening. He started off rather early. <coughs> from Dallas to North or South Carolina, then to Baltimore, okay. and then to Flint. Is that pretty custom? I mean, he was flying all day. It's, uh, well, that's, it's Southwest, obviously. He took Southwest. Yes. Uh, Southwest can give you some odd routings, uh, but I do know we have a one stop from Dallas, Love Field, uh, because I've taken it. Um, one stop. You have actually two options on that. You can go Dallas to Baltimore, um, gets you in here about, uh, well, let's see, it left there about 9.30, came in about 4 o'clock. Or you could have, he also had the option to do the one stop through Tampa, although I will say that Tampa probably changed because of the spring break schedule. Um, Southwest changes their schedules to accommodate um, the, their different loads going north-south, especially this time of year. So I don't know what, what options were presented to him, <coughs> excuse me, but I do know there are one stop options because I've taken them. Yeah, I just thought that was really mm -hmm. a long day. Sure, it makes for a long day. Southwest is a great airline. But sometimes, if you have to connect, uh, they just—it's not, it's not the right connections. Uh, if you want to get from here to Spokane, Washington, you're probably going to see a lot of the U.S. Uh, Even with their leather chairs. So. Yes, it's a great airline. I really uh, enjoy flying them. And again, talking about Southwest, here's one of the key things that that I found out as I'm out talking to people: is air transit went away. And so a lot of people think that, uh, who aren't familiar and haven't paid attention, that there's not a lot of optioning, options out of Flint. And then what I, as I talk to people, they're saying, saying, well, you're no longer on Travelocity. It's no longer an Expedia. Well, that is true. And that's because Southwest doesn't go. They, they don't uh, have their flights on Travelocity or Expedia or Orbitz or anything like that. To book a Southwest flight, you have to go to Southwest. And that has been an interesting uh, uh, awakening, I guess, for some of the people that I'm talking to, uh, that they're just not, don't have the options. Or the other uh, common misperception that, that I hear is, well, I like Flint, I really love enjoying, or enjoy flying out of there, but you, know, you, have, you only can go to Detroit and then you connect there. And when I tell them, well, we don't even have flights to Detroit anymore, uh, then <laughs> that really makes them so then, oh, where do you fly? And so, you know, we, we talk about all the connections as well there. So southwest.com is the way to go. Uh, why fly Flint? Obviously, I'm going to tell you that fly it because it's your hometown airport, and it really makes a difference. When uh, the airlines know when people in Flint are driving down to Detroit, they know you better than we do. So uh, they, they, their goal would be to have all of you fly to Detroit. And certainly Delta's goal would be that. So, but fly out of here. You know, we have the lowest average airfare in Michigan. <coughs> now it's getting tighter because Detroit has Spirit there, which really is drawing down the fares. Uh, but Delta's helping keep them up, so it keep, keeps the balance there. But with the lowest average airfare in Michigan, you can sh uh, shop there. And I don't know if you've seen the billboard that we have out there on 
uh, 75 as you're going south when people are passing just say you've just passed the lowest average airfare in Michigan because we want to get people to stop driving to Detroit we want them to stop start flying out of uh, um, Bishop uh, we have 90% of the market when it comes to the airlines we have affordable parking people love that and they love the ease of access it's 800 feet to walk from long-term parking into in, into your uh, gate uh, so it's really not a long walk facility is beautiful free Wi-Fi uh, you know pre-checks the, the TSA pre-check has been a great thing for the business traveler uh, you can now if you're signed up for pre-check you can uh, walk in keep your laptop and your bag and your belt and your shoes on so that's really a nice thing as well so I'm out getting the word out that's I tell uh, people I'm the uh, head cheerleader for the airport uh, besides my responsibility of running the day-to-day -day and making sure that uh, everything's getting done. I'm out here being the head cheerleader. I, I really, in my short time, have come to uh, uh, really enjoy this facility. I'll say I knew about the facility. I knew about the work that Jim and, uh, and uh, his team was doing uh, long before I came here. And I wouldn't have come here if I didn't think it was uh, a good facility to be at. But it really is uh, it's something that I want to get the word out. I want to get more people flying out of here. There is no reason we had 850,000 passengers. There's no reason why we can't be a million and a half passengers uh, here. We certainly have the uh, the uh, population that we want to do. So that's what my uh, number one goal is to go out there and talk about it. And I urge uh, anybody who uh, wants to follow us to get on Facebook and and all the other ones, uh, Twitter. Um, I, I'm not on all of those, but uh, certainly if you're if you're interested in finding out what's going on, I encourage you to get on there as well. So I'm happy to answer any questions and, uh, and invite any of you to come out to the airport at any time to see what's going on. Thank you. A couple of questions. First off, does the airport receive any of their uh, overnight tax or to help you with advertising or anything else? I don't know. I don't know if we get uh, any of the overnight tax. That's a question of I can get the hotel. Yes, I, I'm. I'm just unaware if we get it. Okay. Second question, um, and that's to put you on the spot. How is Proposal One going to affect our airport? Is Proposal One the uh, the potential the highway the sales tax? The sales tax. You know that's it. it we don't quite know yet. We're working with our uh, state trade association to find out exactly um, how that is going to impact us. Um, you should get it by the Act 51 dollars if you're still part of the We we think we will, yeah. but but we just it's really a little early for us to tell. We're actually going to discuss it tomorrow, and we have a state meeting in Lansing as well to get more information. So I I can provide that information. Maybe put a little bit of uh, white paper for you guys uh, to see what, what the impact to us will be. It might help us here. I know sure. you're limited what you can do. Sure. Yeah, it's a, it's interesting. We, you know, we were a little disappointed in 2014 that uh, some of the proposals that we as an airport community, not necessarily Bishop, but an airport community in Michigan pushed through, uh, but none of those were accepted and then of course the legislature uh, uh, went the way of doing the ballot. So uh, we're, we're getting our act together, and tomorrow we'll, we'll really be uh, we're get a lot more information out of that. Did you guys gather any information from passengers, like for marketing future marketing or anything? <coughs> when you say maybe surveying that? I'm, I'm thinking that it'd be nice to know how many passengers spend the night in Genesee County mm -hmm. and fly out of Michigan. Sure. And I, historically, we have not. I'm looking at an initiative that uh, that we did in Fort Wayne that I thought was very successful. We surveyed people on our wireless who accessed our wireless with two or three question survey to find out where they were going, where they were uh, from, and what their thoughts on the airport were. It really was an information gathering tool for us uh, in Fort Wayne. We had about 500 people a week uh, respond to that, so it gave us a lot of. Uh, I'll say more anecdotal, certainly uh, not uh, quantitative uh, information, but anecdotal information that we could uh, uh, get a sense of what people thought about the airport, what little things, while they're using it, uh, you know, there's little things as uh, baby changing tables in the bathroom. You know, some things you're just too
too close, you can't see the forest from the trees, and then your passengers and your customers tell you what, what, what they really think. That's something that I'd like to bring in, in here to get more information on that. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Thank you for a great presentation.
uh, presented on Thursday. I was very glad to be there. I took copious notes since I believe any decision in this area has far-reaching consequences and requires careful examination of information about the proposing companies, their intended process, and specifics regarding deliverables. The companies were far more different than I would have expected, with one clearly offering an outsourcing measure and the other offering comprehensive, well-integrated tools that will allow purchasing to be greatly improved while remaining in house with county oversight. While that's the greatest difference, there were many other differences as well. I am concerned that there seemed to be a lack of notification. I would not have known uh, that these presentations were taking place except that uh, Commissioner Young uh, mentioned that there the, the purchase conditions and the uh, proceeding was bad and there seemed to be an inexplicable problem within the routine contract approved for staples. So um, I asked some very direct questions of the purchasing manager and I found out from anywhere at the meetings. There was a very clear attempt to prevent my attendance at that presentation. And I'm not clear uh, on whether that was because of the wish to confine all information to a select subset of the board files, or if it was my gender that has been suggested to me. I was prevented from providing any evaluation. There was a reference to a memo that advised the purchasing manager to only allow those pre-selected uh, to weigh in. Hopefully, there will not be any prevention of access to further information. I think that it's important. This decision regarding purchasing will impact many things. Access to full information is critical, so please remove the obstacles to that. This discussion should include all commissioners with access to information. Rating by a select few is not an acceptable substitute in this case. The public needs to view the debate and offer comment. So I'm asking that any move to bring a purchasing resolution forward is preceded by some process. Thank you. Thank you. Community Economic Development Committee, Tony Brown, Checkers. Move C1 resolution for the planning request to approve household hazardous waste collection event setting for the current needs for the community support. Support. Any discussion on C1? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Please continue. C2 resolution approving overnight travel for planner one to attend the Michigan Recycling Coalition in the Congress of Calvary. Support. Any discussion on C2? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Move C3 resolution authorizing the submission of a proposal to MDQ for a 2015 community pollution prevention grant to establish a latex recycling drop off location in the city of Planner. Support. Any discussion on C3, Commissioner? Mr. Bradshaw, there's someone that's represented. Good morning. Good morning. Is this a new grant? Where have you seen this? Yes, a uh, brand new grant opportunity that we took a look at. Um, we think uh, uh, latex pain is probably one of the hardest things for us to deal with. Um, and so we thought it was worthwhile to go after this. Is there a simple solution to uh, separate and see how monitors are? I don't know. This one's more um, dealing with trying to reuse it and put it back into um, actual people's uh, hands, um, which is probably the best thing you could ever do for recycling is actually just reuse the product. So. But actually, latex paint the best way to dispose of it, isn't it, with drying out? Correct. Latex paint is not hazardous. Um, the uh, best way is to dry it out, either open the lid, put kitty litter, there's a whole host of different ways um, to try and get rid of it. Um, our attempt is to actually get some value from that rather than just kind of dry it out and throw it in the land. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Bradshaw? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed. Do we have a report from Jefferson today? No, sir. Thank you for your report. Finance Committee, Mark Young, Jefferson. We've got one resolution ratifying our today's action establishing two vital records division deputy court positions and authorizing the filling position of temporary health opinion records. Support. Any discussion on that one? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move F2 resolution ratifying expedited action eliminating within the office of the prosecuting attorney a budgeted paralegal assistant position establishing and filling a paralegal position. Support. 
Any discussion on F2? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. We'll have three resolution accepting treasurer's interim investment reports for. Any discussion on F3? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. We'll have four resolution approving GBRC's director's increase in hours for. Any discussion on F4? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. We have a couple of trippers. No visits. Thank you for your support. Commissioner Hamilton. Through you to uh, my Chair, does this follow in line with our retirement policy? Which part? On the employment side, Mark. Yeah, as far as the resolution approving the GBRC director yes. increase? Yes, yeah. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. <coughs> I'm, I'm of the assumption that it does. I, that's something that we have to look at to make sure if there's any discrepancies on it. <coughs> Actually, Fred's here. Okay, Fred can probably answer that. I didn't see what Thank you. Right, a little, little correction to the issue is that I'm not asking for increased hours. I'm just asking to be paid for the hours I work. Um, so it's a little bit different. Uh, but no, I'm still a, I'd still be a part-time employee. No benefits. Thank you. Thanks for your clarification. Thanks for coming. Government Operations Committee, Brian Lumber, Chairperson. Move G1, Resolution Bank, County Bills. Support. Any discussion on paying the bills? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. Move G2 resolution authorizing the sheriff to accept the 2014 15 hazardous material emergency planning grant from the regional board. Support. Any discussion on G2? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Move 3 to um, G3 resolution. Okay. Resolution authorizing the sheriff to apply for an acceptance of a FY2014 state homeland security program. Grant for equipment and training. That's right here. FY 2014. Go ahead, Professor Council. Look at the back up in the resolution. Any discussion on what you're looking at? What was the question, Mr. Chair? It was right here. It was right here. 2014. 14, 15. 14, 15. Um, <coughs> okay, resolution authorizing the sheriff to apply for and accept an FY 2014-2015 State Homeland Security Program grant for equipment and training. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion passed. Move G four resolution authorizing overnight travel for the Treasury Accounting Systems Coordinator to attend the Michigan Municipal Treasury Association basis. Institute Training in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, April 19th to 24th, 2015. Sure. Any discussion in deep pool? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution approved. Um, move G5, I'm sorry. Support. Resolution approving six month extension of the health care consulting service contract with Bulk Consulting. Support. Any discussion in G5? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion Move very well, kind. Support. Say aye. 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 Yes, a quick quick report. Um, I will um, address each one of these questions that were posed by the person that came up and spoke earlier. Um, I do know that there are um, some things that are taking place related to extended hours um, for um, animal control. And um, I met with a um, young lady from across the street, Mrs. Um, Vicki Van Bruin, as possibly be the person that we will add to the Animal Advisory Subcommittee for the City of Flint Representative. And I will be talking with um, the Subcommittee Chairperson um, for Animal Control after this so we can see about putting the meeting together because I know that that's something that, um, that we've talked about and we really need to expedite that so that some of the questions and concerns that um, we have from the community can be addressed. So that, that is in the work. And I will be addressing these. I'll, I'll get them to you um, as soon as possible, probably within the next day. Thank you. Commissioner, as you put that together, will you copy all Yeah, I'll copy everybody. Thank you. Human Services Committee, bring it back, Jeffers. Move H1, a resolution authorizing G-Card submission 
the annual Head Start grant application for the 2015-2016 school year. Any discussion on each one? All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, so Move H2, a resolution about finance by action, authorizing the health department employee travel. Support work. Any discussion on H2? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No report. Public Works Committee, Michael Lynch, Jeffers. Move P1, resolution approving the speeded action granting equalization request to approve an equipment lease with the city of Mount Morris for computer. Equipment and allows the city to upgrade the BS and A.net software. Support. Any discussion on P1? I, I, I want to make reference that Thomas Darnell, the city manager for City of Morris, is here. I didn't know if anyone had any questions for him or not. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move P2, resolution approving the contract with attorneys for Indignant Fathers PLLC. For legal representation of indigenous fathers in circuit court proceedings. Support. Any discussion on P2? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Move P3, resolution approving contract with Express Scripts, Inc. For, for pharmacy benefits management services. Support. Any discussion on P3? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed. Do we have a report from the chairperson? Not this time. Auditory resolutions, preparation, which please? Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Any unfinished business? New and miscellaneous business? Mr. Chair. Sure. Okay, mm -hmm. I do want to comment that it's become very obvious that there is a subset of this board which is comprised of five members and that while complying with the letter of the meeting, you are not complying with the spirit, and indeed there is a run to run situation going on, which I personally observed this morning, and it's been evident for a while. I want to stress to you that having the power, the five votes, to do whatever you like does not necessarily confer wisdom. Only by having full information and discussion with the board arrive at some decisions. I think that was shown most notably right out of the shoots in January with some decisions that were made regarding animal control. So I urge you to rethink your process. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, thank you. I'm changing a March 3rd, 30th board meeting from the 8th to April 2nd. Commissioner Henry brought to our attention that uh, commissioners would be at the MML, or I mean, uh, the MAC conference, not the Michigan Municipal League MAC conference. And so, if it's a pleasure to support, we'll move March 30th to April 2nd at the same time at 9 o'clock. What's your pleasure? Uh, could we review our calendar for a second, please? Sure. Can you
When you get done with that important thing, come see me.